it's finally here. After a long wait, Hogwarts Legacy has finally released with a massive hype train behind it. This game was developed by Avalanche Software and published by Portkey Games. Studios that, up until Hogwarts Legacy, were really only known for developing bargain bin Disney movie tie-in games and Harry Potter mobile games. So I didn't really know what to expect from these studios. Was it going to be another garbage game that no one's going to play, or will it be a masterpiece? Warner Bros seemed to have trusted them and gave their full AAA backing. And now after this game has been released, everyone has been asking the big question. Is Hogwarts Legacy any good? And to make a long story short, yes, Hogwarts Legacy is good. Really good in fact. It has some issues, but overall the good outweighs the bad. Now I'll admit, I didn't really have any expectations for Hogwarts Legacy. Not because I thought it was going to be bad, but because I didn't watch any trailers or promotions for it. But my god was there a lot of controversy with this game's release. So many people were getting harassed for trying to play this game. And there was an attempted boycott, which at this point I think did the opposite of its intention and actually drove the sales up. Anyway, I know very little about this controversy and it has nothing to do with me. So I'm going to continue reviewing this game as unbiased as I can. First, let's talk about what Hogwarts Legacy does best. This game does an amazing job at creating a vast open world filled to the brim with stuff to do. When it was announced that Hogwarts Legacy would be an open world game, I'll admit I was pretty skeptical about it at first. Because a lot of AAA developers nowadays seem to think that making their game open world is going to vastly improve it because there's more game. And what we end up with is an empty open world devoid of any life and lacking any engaging content. And I wasn't looking forward to another AAA empty open world in Hogwarts Legacy. But to my surprise, this game is actually the complete opposite of that. Hogwarts Legacy actually has a lot of content in it. I've lost so many hours to this game just exploring and uncovering what this game has to offer. I've put about 37 hours into this game just from the story and side quests alone, but there's so much more content that I haven't even touched yet. I could easily get another 10 to 15 more hours of content just by exploring the world alone. There's just so many things to do and discover within this game, it's kind of overwhelming honestly, but the good kind. And the best part about Hogwarts Legacy is that it's genuinely interesting to explore. The developers have perfectly captured the whimsical and mysterious atmosphere that Hogwarts has in the movies. There's so many hidden secrets and puzzles littered throughout the campus. Hogwarts is essentially one big puzzle disguised as a school. And not only that, but Hogwarts itself is massive. You could easily get lost here if there wasn't a mini-map to guide you. And it would be one thing to have the entirety of Hogwarts explorable, but you also have the entire region to explore and discover. It's pretty clear that the open world was the main focus during development. Like there's so much attention to detail here. You can literally enter every room and every house in this game. There's nowhere where you can't go and it's pretty amazing the amount of freedom you get in this game. And I can't talk about how massive the open world is without talking about just how beautiful this game is. Hogwarts Legacy's world just looks so amazing. Everything from the day and night cycle, the multiple seasons, the amount of detail and the textures, it all comes together to make this game so breathtaking to look at. Now I want to talk about the story for a bit. In Hogwarts Legacy, you get to play as your own character, and your character has been recently accepted into the aggressively British wizarding world of Hogwarts, and is the new fifth year on the block. While on your way to Hogwarts, your character goes to an underground goblin vault and enters the restricted area of it, discovering these ancient relics that are the key to holding ancient magic. Two evil dudes and a goblin with really sharp teeth named Ranrock find out that you took the relic like they were after, and now they're after you. Your character eventually discovers that they have the ability to use ancient magic, and that there are these wizards called Keepers who are like guardians of this ancient magic. The Keepers are trying to prevent Ranrock and his cronies from acquiring these relics so they can get the ancient magic and like control the world or something. Now it's up to you and the help of your friends to harness your powers and to stop Ranrock from getting that power. I'm gonna be honest, the story in Hogwarts Legacy isn't really that much to write home about. It's a pretty stock standard story of the good guys trying to stop the bad guys from getting untold power. They don't try to write anything fancy and that's okay. What really immersed me into this game though were the side quests. These side quests were way more compelling than the main story was. For me, Sebastian's story was so much more interesting than whatever was going on in the main story. And his story is just one of many, 
many side quests in this game and not all of them are shown on your map so it encourages you to explore different towns and villages. One thing that kind of disappointed me though was that there isn't any kind of morality system. When I heard that there were different dialogue options and they would affect the outcome of a situation, I thought there was going to be something like a Mass Effect Karma system where your choices could affect your standing with each character and they would treat you differently based on that. Or if you used any of the unforgivable spells, the characters would treat you differently. But sadly, they don't even seem to care. Hell, you can even break the locks to someone's house in broad daylight, trespass into their home, and steal all of their belongings while they're home, and no one would so much as bat an eye. Which was kind of weird that I could just commit these most heinous crimes and get away with it. Now, Hogwarts Legacy certainly has a lot of very good aspects to it, but it's not without some flaws. A lot of them come from the technical issues that the PC version has. This game suffers from some really bad technical issues. The entire time throughout my playthrough, there was constant frame skipping, and it was at its worst during combat where it would randomly freeze right before an enemy attacks me. And there's nothing I could do about it, which was really frustrating because the combat was really fast paced and I needed every bit of time to react. But fortunately, my enjoyment of this game wasn't ruined by these technical issues and hopefully they can fix this in the future. I want to talk about the gameplay now. Hogwarts Legacy is an open world action RPG with a gear based loot system and talent trees. The gear system is pretty simple. You get the standard loot rarities that boost up one of the three stats, health, offense, or defense, and some are able to be enchanted or upgraded. It's a pretty basic system, but it gets the job done. However, I do like that the gear changes your character's appearance, so now I can save the world while looking like a schizophrenic pimp. And the talent tree is actually pretty cool because each of the traits changes the properties on your spells and enhances them to do extra things like make your spells an AoE, or allows you to transform enemies into an exploding barrel that you can then toss at the others, which is pretty cool. Remember earlier when I said that I wasn't expecting anything from this game? Well, I kinda lied. When I first heard that this would be an open world game where you can do whatever you want, I kinda expected it to be like GTA but in the Harry Potter universe. But after playing this game, it wasn't anything like that at all. I don't know, I think the memes gave me the wrong impression. Anyway, the magic system was also really fun to play with. Each spell does something unique and it's so cool to see how each one of them interacts with the world. And these puzzles push the limits on the amount of different ways that you can use your spells. Especially in combat, your spells all do wildly different things to the enemy, and you're encouraged to chain them together to do way more damage. Speaking of combat, this might be a hot take, but I don't think the combat is good. Let me explain. It's really cool with the amount of interactions that work in enemies during combat. Like, you can use Levioso to levitate an enemy, then use Descendo to slam them down for a bunch of damage. Or you can transform an enemy into an exploding barrel and use it to smash into another enemy. And there's so many interactions like this that are really cool. But the problem for me is that this game is way too fast paced for me to stop and think about what spells to use next. All the attacks travel instantly including the enemies and you only have a split second to react to most of the attacks. Like look at this enemy right here and how when he attacks he instantly teleports right next to me and hits me. Not really giving me enough time to react. And the spells have really short cooldowns, so the combat just ends up being really spammy and reaction based instead of carefully chaining together spells to dish out the most damage for the situation. I feel like the combat would greatly benefit if everything just slowed down by like 50% and attacks didn't instantly travel to you. I want to feel like I'm playing a powerful wizard casting slow but devastating spells one after another. But instead, we get Call of Duty with wands. Another problem that I had was that most of the boss fights weren't really that good. They mostly ranged from mediocre to just bad. They'll either have at most 3 or 4 attacks in their moveset or they'll just be normal enemies with a bigger health pool. Either way, they got pretty boring to fight because they were just damage sponges that never really do anything interesting. And the targeting is really janky. Like if you wanted to target a specific enemy within a group of enemies, good luck with that. And a lot of the time it will just target a completely different enemy than the one I want. Like I want to target this guy over here, but the game is making me target this guy and it's just frustrating. This boss fight here perfectly represents all of my problems with the gameplay. The boss is just a normal enemy with a bigger health pool, multiple adds that instantly teleport to you when they attack, hard to target a specific enemy, and infinitely spawning adds. 
I was playing on hard difficulty for the entire playthrough up until this fight where I had to turn down the difficulty because this fight was just so frustrating. I had way more fun in the game with everything that wasn't combat and it's just so disappointing that one of the main aspects of gameplay didn't quite hit the mark for me because of its execution. Overall Hogwarts Legacy is a great game that does a lot to create an amazing world filled with so much content. This game's world is absolutely beautiful and with the amount of things to do here it makes Hogwarts feel like a living breathing world. And the individual character stories are really compelling, to the point that they're even more interesting than the main story itself. The magic system is really fun and rewarding to play with and it encourages you to play around and experiment with it. But this game is not without its flaws. Firstly, it has some really bad technical issues, like frame skipping and the occasional freezing. Secondly, this game's combat is probably the weakest aspect of this game because it's too fast paced which makes the combat become more spammy and reaction based. And the bosses are pretty mediocre because most of them are just damage sponges that behave the same way normal enemies do. But even though Hogwarts Legacy has some flaws, the sheer amount of content and enjoyment I had from this game made it totally worth a $60 price tag. That's why I recommend this game at full price. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comments down below and make sure to like and subscribe for more reviews in the future. See ya.